Temple 86, Shidoji, the temple of fulfilling one's wish. And this is a temple with a little bit of everything. It's a really interesting temple in the sense of, there's a lot going on here. And it's almost like a garden of Eden as you try to weave your way through and find what's going on. As we have giant straw sandals and Neil greeting us at this fairly large gate and fairly large Neil. When Buddhism entered Japan in the sixth century, there was a battle between the indigenous clans that supported what would become known as Shinto and the immigrant clans from the mainland, mostly China and Korea, that supported Buddhism. And this battle was fundamentally between the Nakatomi and Mononobi clan who supported Shinto because they had particular uh, professions overseeing the Shinto rites that were being performed versus the Soga, an immigrant clan that supported Buddhism because by supporting Buddhism and the Buddhist rites, it gained them uh, political power, spiritual power. Uh, eventually the Soga won out and came to power. But eventually hubris got to the Soga as they tried to stop ruling from behind the scenes and try to take over. And eventually the Soga are overthrown. And they're overthrown by, partly through the efforts of Nakatomi Kamatari. And for his efforts of helping overthrow the Soga, Nakatomi Kamatari was bestowed the family name Fujiwara, one of the most illustrious names in Japanese history. And it is from this that the Fujiwara started. And they would go on to rule Japan as regent to the emperor for centuries. Here we have the main hall. The image inside this hall dates to the Empress Suiko and the sixth century, very earliest. And this temple is very famous for its landscape gardens and you can sort of tell that just walking through it. It really is a type of Garden of Eden. You have the main hall with a very, very old Honza, one of the oldest Buddhist sculptures in Japan, and the Daishi Do right next to it. Getting back to the story of the Fujiwaras, Fujiwara Kamatari's daughter went to China and she became a concubine of Tang Emperor Taizung. And she sent back three precious jewels by boat for her brother to use in the work he was doing building Nara's Kofukuji Temple. Unfortunately, the boat was wrecked near Shido Bay and the three gems were stolen by the undersea Dragon King. Her brother, Fujito, obsessed with finding the jewels, came here in disguise and married a local female diver. Eventually, the woman diver gave birth to a son. One day, she discovered who Fujiwara Fujito really was and agreed to the dangerous mission of retrieving the gems for her husband on the promise that their son should inherit the Fujiwara clan. After much searching, she finally found the Dragon King's lair and the jewel. She stole them and escaped pursuit by slitting her breast and hiding the jewel inside. She was dead by the time she reached the surface. She sacrificed her life in order to retrieve the jewel for her son, who became Fujiwara Fusasaki, the ancestor of the northern branch of the Fujiwara aristocracy, the most powerful branch of Fujiwara family during the Heian period. This temple was built by Fujiwara Fusaki, the son, and by Gyogi in 694 as a memorial to her and remains dedicated to the spirits of the dead. While the main temple here is dedicated to the 11-headed canon, this temple is more strongly associated with Emma, the king of hell, than it is with the Bodhisattva of mercy. And Emma is, there's a special Emma house here and you can go in and see a Emma with an 11 heads on top of his head. And there's actually a separate shoeing, a separate signature for this uh, building here on the ground. The jewels retrieved from the Dragon King under the sea sit between the eyes of the statue at Kofukuji Temple in Nara. If you're interested in this legend, 
And there is a no play called Ama about these pearl divers and this story. Check it out. The main hall of Shidoji was built in 1670. Within the grounds of Shidoji, there are many, many buildings hiding within this jungle-ish terrain. There's the building with Emma, the king of the underworld, and where you can turn on the light and see his head. And here's the pagoda. And to the right of the pagoda is a little building with naked old grandmothers in it, as it was described to me. It's from the Edo period. It's a national treasure building. This is the Okonowin to Shidoji. The sign right here reads Shidoji Okonowin. And it's on the way from Temple 85 to Temple 86. If you're following the Heno Path, you actually go down this street here. And Shidoji, I believe, is about a kilometer up this road. This is a small little temple dedicated to uh, Jizo. And you enter it and everything is right there. Uh, there's a graveyard and a basin to wash your hands, though there's no water in it. And the Daishi Do in the main hall. The bell and there's actually someone here to get your uh, book signed. A compact little temple, a neighborhood temple, but one of some significance in that it is the Okonowin to Shidoji. So on your way between temples uh, 85 and 86, take a little break, offer a few prayers, get your book signed, and then be on your way. Temple 86, Shidoji, the temple of fulfilling one's wish. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.